take your shoes off, go out barefoot. And who cares if you get dirty? Who cares if you get muddy or anything? Go just stand even. Go stand, go sit. And if you sit silent enough, you're going to hear, you'll hear everything about nature. Welcome to Wild Development Studio. Join us as we venture into the breathtaking realm of wildlife arts and untamed adventures. With captivating stories from the field and ideas to dive into the visual arts, we'll ignite your passion for conservation. Get ready to develop something wild. Welcome to Wild Developments. I am your host, Lauren, and today we are diving into mental health and journaling with Carrie Ann Van Wilden. She is a public speaker bringing impactful attention to all aspects of mental health with humor and sparkle. Author of multiple journals and the children's book, I Don't Know Why, that her children illustrated. She coaches women seeking to find their voice, recovering from self-harm, manage anxiety, or explore new paths in life. She provides a safe and supportive space where clients can freely express themselves, heal, and grow. She creates tailored plans to help overcome obstacles, achieve personal growth, and gain the tools needed to build resilience, manage anxiety, and become the most empowered you. She recently opened a merch line centered around mental health, naming the store after what she has dubbed herself, your favorite hot mess. Welcome to the show, Carrie Ann. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I am too. We met through the Mic Drop Workshop and you are a speaker, a presenter. Can you tell us a little bit about what you talk on? Yeah, sure. Um, I speak on mental health, mental illness, um, overcoming the stigma, learning how to not necessarily give advice to people that are dealing with any type of mental illness. And, and really mental illness can be as, and I hate to say simple, but as simple as anxiety. So just learning how to just sit with people and learning that not everything regarding mental health is terrifying, is dark, but there are darker as aspects. Of course there are, but learning how to just be able to be present in that moment. And there's different ways to go about things and not just automatically assuming that that person needs more help than they do. Yeah. A lot of times we feel like we always have to have the answers right away. And sometimes you're right. The answer is just as simple as sitting and being with that person and being in the moment. What advice do you have for someone that would like to be there for another going through a difficult time? I guess I'm going to have to use it as a personal experience because I, I have anxiety and depression and all that fun stuff. For me, if I'm having like an anxiety attack of any sort, it's, it's not trying to come in and give me advice or tell me, okay, do this or do that or do this. It's simply just to sit there and let me go through the motions. Let me have the anxiety attack. Let it doesn't, for me at least, it doesn't take super long. And just knowing that somebody is sitting right here, even if they're just sitting, sometimes it's bringing me a blanket, like my favorite blankie. Or if you're, if you have a loved one that or a friend or a colleague that's just is having a very hard time with depression. And instead of going over there and saying, well, let's go get you help because that person more times, more often than not has reached out to get help. And maybe they are in the middle of getting help, but going over there with their favorite snack or just saying, Hey, you know what? Let's go for a walk. Let's go for, let's go for a swim in the lake. If you live near a body of water, I should say, or just I'll just sit here with you and you, you can just sit with me. Like, we'll just be present. We'll just be together. No advice is given. No, no judgment. I think that's a big thing for me too, is there's so much judgment. And, and if you don't know about something, you can ask questions, but also like respect that person's boundaries. If they're having a hard time, just sitting with them even is just, it's a simple, simple thing. And it's probably one of the best things you can do for somebody that's going through something. And that's really hard for us in a day and age where it's like, we have to have instant gratification. We have to have the fix now and everything has to be happy and perfect all the time. It's okay to have an ugly moment where, you know, somebody might be crying or sobbing, or I'm even, I'm looking behind your shoulder and there's a picture on your wall. It says, sometimes this is what resilience looks like. And yeah. the person's just like, 
hugging a pillow on the floor. Mm -hmm. As a society, we're not used to embracing those moments. And that's, I think, for everybody, I mean, I shouldn't say for everybody, but for everybody, I think it's it's hard to understand it about yourself even. Like you were saying, like that it, sometimes just, I have a hard time crying. I am not a good, I used to be, I used to just cry all the time about everything, but I'm getting to, it's almost like my heart kind of hardened up because I I'm, I was so afraid because you are, you are looked at so differently. If you have any kind of mental illness or anything like that, you're looked at very differently. And so you have to, you've learned, like I've learned to just harden my heart and I don't cry. And my husband has even said that to me, like, you haven't cried. Like, and I was like, a, have you ever watched, oh, I don't think I can say it. There was a show on and there was an episode where she literally just wanted the afternoon just to cry. And my husband kind of makes fun of, not makes fun, but like made a joke about that. Like you used to do that and I don't anymore because you're looked at so differently for doing that. So yeah, that picture is actually a good reminder for me to say, it's okay. You're allowed to sit down and just cry. No matter how ugly a cry you do, you're allowed. <laughs> And that's, it's healthier to feel and process your emotions than to like, you know, stuff them down. Yeah, that's something that we, we have a hard time. I think we all, we've learned that it's not a, not acceptable, I guess, in, in our society is you have to be strong and, and you have to be tough and, you know, back in the day it was boys don't cry men don't cry and so I feel like there's a that generation's coming up as they're learning that yeah it's okay that I cry it's it's okay that my feelings got hurt I'm allowed to have those feelings and I'm hoping that more and more people are learning that it's it's okay and your friends it's okay that your your best friend happens to be a male in his mid-50s and he is just sobbing uncontrollably that's you don't have to do anything just sit there like hey let me just let me at least show you that I'm here with you and I'll, I'll rub your back or whatever and I just I don't know I feel like it's just such a such a hard thing to to talk about for a lot of people and I am trying so hard to just to talk about it because um not talking about it doesn't make it go away right Thank you to get out there and spread that message and to normalize it more. Absolutely. I see you've got a link to a journal that's available on Amazon. What inspired you to create a journal? I journal a lot. Um, I'm actually looking at two of my journals right here. So <laughs> I try to have a journal or some, at least something to write on everywhere I'm going to be in my house because Sometimes that's the best thing for me. And I think that that's a good thing for people. So I wanted to create a journal and, and actually I, I put little quotes in there and little like inspirational, like, Hey, have you checked in with yourself? How are you doing today? Um, I feel like I, I did a couple of different parts in there where it was writing a letter to yourself. I'm a huge, write a letter to yourself, dear me you are strong and you're brave and you're resilient and you're smart and you're beautiful and all of the positive things. And then I have some that are dear me. I'm really sorry that I didn't do X, Y, Z. And you felt diminished or defeated. And I, so that's a big part of that journal too. And I just, I think everybody should journal, right? Even if it's just, I mean, please buy my journal, but even if it's <laughs> notebook paper and you're just, you have a, a spiral binder or whatever, a spiral notebook, just a journal, just whatever thoughts come into your head. And if you're angry, write it down mm -hmm. why I'm angry and come back to it in a week and say, oh yeah, I was angry about that, but I'm not anymore. It really helps to process. Sometimes we don't always have somebody to talk to, or maybe you don't want to share those feelings outwardly with someone and writing it down and going through the steps really helps you process. I, um, I had some journals where I, I wrote down like my accomplishments for the year. And if I'm feeling like, gosh, I'm not, you know, I'm 42, I'm not at 
the place where I thought I'd be at by this stage of my life. And I look back at my accomplishments. I'm like, well, hot damn, I'm not doing a lot better than I thought I was, you know? Yeah. yeah. You need that reminder sometimes. And, um, just you, there are a lot of times we talk so bad about ourselves and I think writing it down, it's almost like there's another person there. And you, you know, if I catch my husband saying something bad about himself, I'm like, Hey, don't talk about my husband like that. And we need that reminder not to talk about ourselves that way. Yeah. Uh, big time. Um, my kids. So I have two sons. They're 13. I had to think about that. They're 13 and 10. And my youngest is like my biggest, um, he's my hype man. <clears throat> so a little backstory, I'm an alcoholic, I'm in recovery. And so, you know, for much of his life, he only saw me drinking. And that sounds, that's that actually was really hard to say, but it's true. So when I became sober, he became like my hype man. Like, you got this, mom, you're great. And I mean, he was little still, so like, I don't know, seven, maybe six. Anyways. But so then I, when I got, when I started recovery and I started journaling a lot more and I started doing like words, like, so my word of the year say was unstoppable. He would do his, sorry, that was just him. He would do his word as proud or brave or so we talked about words and he actually uses like proud. I'll say he used that to talk about a friend at school. Like, mom, I was so proud of so-and-so today. Aww. And so it just instilling, th- instilling, but instilling that has been such a big thing for me too. Because like you said, you talk so badly about yourself. You don't, you don't think about that fact. Like I do the very best I can do to not be like, God, I'm so dumb. Cause no, I'm not, I'm not dumb. That was maybe a dumb decision. I did something that wasn't smart, but I'm not like me in a whole is not dumb. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm trying to get my, you know, 13, that's such a tough age. My goodness. So I'm trying to get them in that mindset of like, talk good about yourself. Talk nicely. Not easy. I get that. So look in the mirror. What do you see? What do you like about yourself? What don't you like about yourself? What can you change? Mm -hmm. Especially with like social media. It's so, I don't, I don't want to see my kids fall into the same path that I did. And so I try really hard to let them like come obviously come to me and talk to me if you need to but also like talk to yourself because that's sometimes what you need to do Mm -hmm. pivoting a little bit in your mental health journey have you found that being outside has been healing for you at all very much so i i quite enjoy we have got some trails around us and i love going there and um funny enough probably late summer I was it was a Sunday afternoon and I was just in this terrible mood like I was so angry and grumpy and I looked at my husband I said I need to get outside like I need to go so he drove over to one of the trails that was near us and we walked for like an hour and I just and it wasn't like a a hike where you were like huffing it it was just a nice and I would find like a cool rock and like a bigger one. And I would just sit on it for a minute and just breathe in and say, Oh, I needed this. Like I needed to be out in nature and to, you know, see the things. And there was like a little woodchuck that was waddling away. And I was like, some of course I'm calling to it. Come here. I want to pet you, but that's not a smart idea. <laughs> but I think nature is, we take, we take that for granted. Like, you literally just go outside and you sit underneath the warm sun. Or, I mean, if you get warm sun right now, we have sun. It's been like day three or four of sun and it's beautiful. But <laughs> but you sit on the warm sun or like, I love to sit by trees. Like we, we don't have very many trees in our backyard. Like we've got two trees and they're like opposite of each other. But I like to go sit underneath one of those trees and just like, it's, it's, comforting it's like it's almost like you're getting a hug and mm-hmm. just sitting there it's beautiful do you have a favorite memory in nature like something that was just life-changing for you oh that's a good one I mean I have a really funny memory I have funny is good too <laughs> my husband and I were on a hike at one of the trails that we love and 
it was it was springtime so it's kind of mucky and stuff and so we were jumping over this i mean it was a large mud pit and i got over it no problem like i didn't jump over it because i was being smart and like i found an area i could walk around he thought he was gonna jump over it his foot sunk in <laughs> and his shoe came off because it got oh. stuck in the mud <laughs> so he was of course not very happy but it made it such a fun end because it was the end of our hike. It made it so much fun just to laugh because you thought you were being smart and you got stuck in the mud. <laughs> I hear this and say, mm, but it's true. <laughs> it's almost like quicksand, which we all thought was going to be so much more of a problem, right? Right. <laughs> I still like I, this is really embarrassing, but I still, once in a while, when I go somewhere, if I see like a big, I won't go in it. I'm like, what if I get sucked in? So I'm like looking, is there a tree? Is there like a branch? Can I grab onto that if I fall in? And we're not, it's fine. Growing up in the eighties, they make us think that there's quicksand everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did want to ask you a little bit more about journaling. How can we make it a habit? Because it is a little bit difficult for me to get into the habit of writing every day. What are some of your tips? Uh, I keep some kind of paper that I can write on in literally every room, except for the bathroom. That's not true. I have sticky notes in the bathroom, but that, <laughs> that's not even related. Cause I mean, well, bring your phone to the bathroom, come on. But I have paper in every place that I'm going to be in the house. So if, for me, it's so if I get an idea, I can write it down. But um, also there, you can put an app on your phone. No, don't do it by journals, but um, it's just like a little notebook app. And sometimes I'll just be sitting on the couch and I'll get upset about something. So I'll just quick type it out. But if you keep paper by you, even if it's like, a, even just scratch paper, if you just have like some scratch paper and just write write something down, like write down today I, or at this point, I'm really angry. I'm really upset. I'm really happy. I'm really excited. I'm, and just kind of write about it. At, at some point, you'll get to a point where it's like a habit. Um, I know for me too, I've kind of fallen out of the habit of this, but in the mornings, I would get up at like 5 30, 5 45, and I would make a cup of tea and I would just sit and I would just journal. I would just write for a little bit. And then I, I fell out of that habit because then I got really tired and I was like, I don't, I just want to sleep for a little bit longer. So I need to get back into that habit. But even if you can just, if you're, say, say you take a shower at seven o'clock at night, give yourself an extra 15 minutes and then sit there while you're drying up and just journal about your day or journal about something that made you really, really happy for the week or I, that's just what I do. I, but I love to, I love to write and clearly I love to talk. So huh, that's good. I do voice recordings too, before I did anything like some on TikTok and I do it on TikTok. That's kind of my journal <laughs> at some point, but I, I will turn my uh, phone camera on and video and I'll put it. So it's not like facing me, but it's just down and I'll just talk. Do you do like TikTok live? I haven't done it yet. I mean, I, I could, but I haven't done it yet. Cause I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. I have not done it yet either. Cause I'm, I'm honestly a little bit afraid of trolls. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I, I don't know how my, how I'd react. I'd either be really like my feelings would be really hurt or more than likely I would become a very not nice. And I, I don't want to be that way either. Mm-hmm. Cause that's not nice, but I, some people you stop. <laughs> it's funny how mean people can be behind the veil of a screen and they would never act that way face to face. But some of them might. It, some of them might. That's, that's right. The bad thing. That's working in customer service. Oh, some of them might. Yeah. I feel you there. <laughs> oh, mama. <laughs> I bet you have a whole journal full of customer service experiences. <laughs> I do. I, I, <laughs> I might. <laughs> uh, 
do you have any plans to maybe publish a book someday with your, your journaling? I do. I'm actually working on one. Oh, good. So I do have a book published. Um, it just got published. My it's a, it's a children's book and it's called, I don't know why. And it's basically about emotions and it's, it's, I'm in, I'm really sad today and I don't know why. And they're angry and they're like just they want to throw things and and then dad comes in and saves the day because that's what dads do but so I wrote it um it's an ebook and it's also a published like a a hardcover and paperback that my kids illustrated because I thought oh. how much fun is that well congratulations but, that's so sweet you know but no I am writing a book called your favorite hot mess because that's that's what it is is that's my tagline when I, um, I did a podcast a couple of years ago that I stopped doing and I would, oh, and I do it on TikTok now too. It's your favorite hot mess. Uh-huh. I love it. So it, yeah, I have it in the works. Um, have you written a book? I have not. I have started to once upon a time and it was a collaboration with other people and the um, opinion shifted. So I had to bail out on that. I'm hoping to someday with wild developments. Yeah, you should. You should. Thank you. It's the only thing that I'm having a hard time with is I much like I do when I do TikTok or when I like even talking with you, I don't. I don't have things in an order. Like I go all over the place. My point comes across eventually it gets there, but it's not, it's not in order. So I'm like, that's hard to do when you're writing a book. Yeah. Maybe you can do it like a choose your own adventure and have it at the beginning. Like if you're feeling this today, flip to this page. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It'd be fun. It'd be a new experience every time you read it. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> if I choose that path, I will let you know and I'll we'll collaborate on that. <laughs> Sounds good. And if I know we did the uh, mic drop workshop together, she also does one on publishing a book that was a little like five day boot camp. I think she does it every year. Um, but this group in particular, I've connected with so many wonderful women. Like cause the one before, I didn't connect with anybody, but everybody in this group was just so wonderful. Yeah, this was a nice group. This was fun. It was a lot of fun. I feel like everybody was trying to help each other out. It wasn't like, not that I feel like it would be, but like it, it didn't feel fake or forced. Like, okay, yeah, this is great. And then nothing. Like, I mean, I had a few that would comment on things and say, you know, try this instead. And then I would try it. And I'm like, oh yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, it didn't feel competitive. You're right. It felt very much like everybody was trying to lift each other up. Yeah, that, that was, was great. Because yeah. I mean, I'm not a competitive person by nature, but I'm also like, I can be an envious person. So if I see somebody, I'm like, oh, I wish that was me, but this didn't feel like that at all. This was like, that's awesome. Great. Yeah. I'm excited for you. And I feel like as women, we need to do that more often. <laughs> Agreed for sure. I want to ask, because I think we're close on time, where is your favorite place in the world to go to sit and be in nature? Well, I live in Michigan, so you would think that I would say one of the Great Lakes, but that's not true because I do not like the beach. Um, that's an odd thing to... A longer trail that if you go off you can go to like I don't know if you're supposed to go to that side <laughs> I don't know if that's part of the trail if it's just there if it's like man-made and not like part but there's this just this little spot and it's just it's quiet it's you're literally just sitting and you've got trees all around you you hear the animals I adore that area I I don't know if it's illegal for me to be sitting there but I will go sit there and Sometimes you take your shoes off and just touch the ground with your feet and just breathe it in. 
sounds peaceful. And we need to normalize asking adults what their favorite animals are. So what are your top three favorite animals? Oh my gosh. I love this question. <laughs> crows. I love crows. Um, snakes. I I had a snake that we don't have anymore, but I love snakes. Well, spiders are an animal, but so we'll go, okay. Spiders, but we'll go with another, an animal. Oops. I guess dogs. Oh, I have cats too, though. That would be rude. Dogs. We'll go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I think crows are really cool. There is a lady on TikTok, and if I come across her, I'll have to send her your way. Um, she makes these little contraptions where crows can bring presents to her, and then they get food in exchange. Have you heard of these? Yes. Hey, do you I, no, but I've been wanting crows in my yard for so long because I want to be that neighbor. I want to be that, like, don't go over there because she has crows. Not really, but, but so I created this little space off my deck in the back that it's, it's a, it's a planter box, but I put dirt in there and then I put some tin foil because that's shiny and they come to shiny things. And I put food in there and I put a little water dish. And then my husband sweetly bought me some fake crows on a store. And so I put them there to like maybe get them to come over. Like, hey, there's more. That did not work. Um, I think it scared because I have two that are in my neighborhood and they are across at my kid's school. So I thought that they they didn't like it. So I'm going to have to find that lady and figure out how to do it because I, I want crows. Yeah, I'm going to have to look her up and send that information your way because I think that is so fascinating. They are so smart in figuring things out. And I've heard stories where some, like a little girl dropped her bow and then the crow brought it to her house. It's like, they're so smart. This, where I work, um, it's in a restaurant. Um there is, there are two crows in that area too. And if I have to open the store in the morning, um, all of a sudden, like I'll look up and I'll see one, one's over, I can hear the one over here, but there's one sitting that's always like right on this light post, right by where I park my car. And it's like, it watches me go inside. It's protecting me. I, maybe it's not, but I like to pretend like it is. It's protecting me like, Hey, but I might leave them food. So, so then it's totally looking out after you like, Hey, is this lady bringing me some food? Yeah. You better, and, you know, her. they, they call out if there's danger or something. So they're totally protecting you. I just love crows and like snakes get such a bad rap. They're not bad. Snakes are, they're cute. And I mean, I get it. I get it. But as long as you don't poke at it and just, I mean, if it's scared, of course it's going to bite you just like any animal. Or if you, you smell like food. Right. I mean, that happened to me a couple of times with my pet snake, but, but even like with a dog, you scare a dog or a cat and it's going to nip at you. Right. Snake, but then snakes aren't, I mean, they're just, they're itty. I mean, not all of them, but they're scared. <laughs> yeah. And I used to work at a place with animals and we'd always used to say anything with a mouth could bite, even me. I mean, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right we are almost out of time before we go how can people find you um the beacons page i don't remember what that address is but if i think the easiest way is on tiktok just because i make videos on there and my handle on there is carrie van wheel so it's k-a-r-i-v-a-n-w-e-e-l-e -E I think. Okay. Yeah. I will uh, tag your beacons page and your TikTok in the description of this show. So people can just click right over there and check you out. And then what would be one tip that you have for someone that would like to connect with nature? Just go do it. Take, you know, take your shoes off, go out barefoot. And who cares if you get dirty, who cares if you get muddy or anything Go just stand even go stand, go sit. And if you sit silent enough, you're going to hear, you'll hear everything about nature. 
don't be afraid of the bees flying around. They're not coming to get you. They're not going to come sting you. They're, they're doing their job. Just, just go sit. Doesn't have to be anything big in your front yard. Just go take your shoes off and stand in your front yard or sit in your front yard and just sit quietly. You inspired me. I'm going to go do that. It's 60 degrees here. <laughs> yeah, we just hit like 58 or something today. I'm so excited. Oh gosh. Got to take advantage of this nice weather while it's still technically winter, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. This was nice. And until next time, get outside and see what develops. Thanks for joining Wild Development Studio. We hope this exploration into the world of wildlife arts and adventure has sparked a desire to get outside and connect with something wild. If you have an adventure that's awe-inspiring, don't hesitate to share. Click the link in the description to submit your story to have it featured on our show or be a guest. Until next time, keep connecting to the wild and see what develops. The views, opinions, and statements expressed by individuals during Wild Development Studio Productions do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Wild Development Studio or its affiliates. Participation in any activities, expeditions, or adventures discussed or promoted during our content may involve inherent risks. It is strongly advised that individuals conduct thorough research, seek professional guidance, and take all necessary precautions before engaging in any such activities. Wild Development Studio, its representatives, or employees shall not be held responsible for any injury, loss, damage, accident, or unforeseen incident that may occur as a result of participating in activities inspired by or discussed in our content. By choosing to engage with our content or act upon any information provided, individuals do so at their own risk and discretion.